So I'm here with Roger Noble and Steve Taylor, co-founders and now CEO and CSO respectively of Zagami Limited, a spin out of the University of Oxford. Zagami is a software platform for exploring image data, which combines the images with other metadata to provide a really user-friendly way of analyzing complex visual data sets. Welcome Roger and Steve, and thanks so much for joining me. Firstly, Roger, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. My background, uh, originally I, I studied uh, computer science and multimedia, and for uh, a lot of years I worked as a, a software engineer developing various different solutions for a lot of people back when I was in Australia. Since then, I sort of moved more into the, the data science side of things, and it, that's a, an area of big interest for me is about giving people better access to data and, and making data more available and accessible to, to people. And that sort of led me to start to work on Zagami as a tool for data accessibility and data visualization. And then through that work, uh, eventually, I uh, got in contact with uh, Steve Taylor uh, at the university, and that sort of began the, the foundations of Zagami. And we and then ended up spinning that out as a, as a company in, in 2016. And Steve, what's your background? So my background is um, I'm a microbiologist by trade, um, but was always massively interested in uh, computers from early age. I've been programming computers since the 80s. And uh, I love microscopy. And so combining images and uh, data and biology is like a dream come true for me. Um, I've been working, worked in various different companies uh, from uh, GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, I did a startup in Australia, Bioformatics Startup. I worked at a, a small uh, company doing proteomics, lots of glycosciences. And then I joined Academia in about 2013. And that was to set up a, a, a big high performance uh, supercomputer uh, and you get lots of users to uh, use Biophonic software. So my big goal really has always been to get people to use their software really efficiently and uh, make it as usable as possible because that's where we get the most insight. And Steve, could you tell us more about Zagami and what the problem is that you're trying to solve? Okay, so in biology we have often we have huge amounts of data and we have increasingly huge amounts of images around um, patient data, cellular data, all sorts of different areas. And so let's take an example. In, for example, ultrasound, we have um, uh, a picture of how the blood flow works in the heart. We might know the age, the weight, and the lifestyle of the person. And we may be able to predict that person's going to get disease. But using techniques in AI, we can look at thousands of features around that ultrasound image some of which are useful, some of which aren't. And then Zagami would allow you to combine all these data and look at trends across different patients, across large amounts of ultrasound data, and show what's useful and visually show these trends. And it's also really good at spotting outliers, for example, um, and looking for problems in your data. And it's got a whole range of use in, that, in those areas. And again, it puts it in the hands of uh, scientists and really kind of democratizes the way we can understand how uh, machine learning and AI works in the context of images. So Roger, how big do you believe the opportunity could be for Zagami, both in the UK and globally? So we, we see a really big opportunity for Zagami, uh, especially in the scientific and medical research side of things, which is our big focus at the moment. I think it's pretty fair to say that it's easier and easier these days to generate more and more data as it becomes, um, as these sort of tools become more prevalent. But the, the issue is on how to deal and manage with all of this data that, that is becoming more available, especially on the clinical side of things, where uh, these people are typically, you know, really time poor and it's, it's the, the burden that they have to produce results faster is only ever increasing. And so tools like Zagami that can allow better insight into uh, these sort of machine learning models enables them to not only be more efficient with their time, but also give them better insight into that black box machine learning model and give them explainability so they can produce better patient outcomes. So that's really interesting. So who then are your customers and what's the revenue model for the business? So we have a, a really diverse uh, range of customers actually. Because we have a, a data tool and you can put any kind of data into it, it means that 
we end up with all sorts of different use cases. One of the really early ones that we worked quite closely with was, was in plant phenotyping. And so this is helping researchers to develop better, more resilient strains of crop for the agricultural industry, effectively helping them to grow better crops to feed the world. But actually, since then, we've focused now more on the more the medical side of things. And so we have customers uh, not only here in Oxford, but in Australia and the US and uh, in Europe as well. And the revenue model is we're a SaaS based cloud product. Uh, so we sell annual license subscriptions to all our customers, as well as we provide additional integration services on top of that to help our customers get their data into Zagami. So what challenges have you faced on this journey so far and how have you overcome these? I'd have to say the biggest challenge I think we've faced in building Zagami is really identifying that product market fit. We, you know, spun out from the university as a cool piece of tech, you could say, but it was really struggling to find a bit of a home. You know, who are those people and, and who are those, what are those use cases where you get the most value from Zagami? where we're not like other competitors or that you could easily replace Zagami with another tool. And so it's, it's really been a, a process of working really closely with our customers and really having a good close look at the data that they're generating and pulling those two together to really help us to understand uh, who has the greatest need and who can get the biggest value from a tool like Zagami. And it's something that it, yeah, I, I don't know if you ever get to that destination, mm. um, but we're closer than ever we've, we, we've ever been before. And Steve, can you tell us how COVID is impacting the business and what steps you're taking in response? COVID obviously is a devastating disease and has a lot of impact on patients and also on, on the businesses. But actually for us as a computational business, um, it's fine because we can run really efficiently. We work from home. Uh, so it's really full steam ahead for us in terms of uh, development. Um, and uh, because we're, I mean, this, this fits into the category of things we can help in, we're really trying to uh, work with uh, people in the Oxford ecosystem and beyond to uh, help develop systems that help understand the disease. So for example, we have a project um, where we're looking at X, X-rays to diagnose whether they're COVID or healthy or pneumonia, and we're working with various groups now to get more data to try and um, use that as a prognosis tool. And there's also other projects we're doing that has potential for Sagami at more of the cellular level and to understand the disease. And Steve, can you tell us what it means to you to be an Oxford University spin-out? So being an Oxford uh, spin-out is uh, extremely exciting. I have learned a lot about um, business and how it works and it's uh, in some respects, it's a bit like uh, uh, academia where you do experiments and some things work and some things don't. So it's very, uh, uh, very interesting from that point of view. We've got a great Oxford ecosystem. It's really good being able to collaborate with different groups around uh, the university on, on the product. Um, and it's really great to see your ideas rolled out as a fully professional, uh, well-rounded product. That's a real thrill. And uh, I think it's really great to see all your hard work um, put into place in, with users using it and getting real insight out of their, their data. And that's what makes it all worthwhile. So this all sounds really exciting. Roger, tell us what's next then for Zagami. What's your vision for the future? So for us, at least in the short term, is to really get Zagami into the hands of clinicians and end users so they can help to make more informed and better decisions based on AI, but also allow them to better explain the output of AI. And that also has a secondary use uh, within the regulatory side of things, so that regulators, when they're coming in to uh, audit any kind of machine learning systems that have been developed, that they have full visibility over the, the data that has gone into making up that model. But I think ultimately where we're really heading is back to our roots and what we originally started out to do, which was to just make data more accessible to anyone, regardless of their background. And we really feel that tools like Zagami get that sort of technical part out of the way 
and give them direct access to their data so that they can identify and understand data sets in a way that is not technical and not limiting them to having to learn how to write complex queries or code or anything like that. So it's about democratizing data and data accessibility. So that sounds amazing. And what further investment do you need to achieve this vision? So we're um, currently actively looking for further investment to really grow the team. So we uh, have raised a series of investment over the past few years to really build the product to where it is today. But the next phase for us is on the commercialization side of things. And so that's really what this uh, next round that we're looking to raise is going to go towards to build up our sales and marketing teams and to increase them from where we have them today to really allow us to get Zagami out into the world and, and grow our user base. Thanks so much, Roger and Steve, for talking to us. It's been great to hear your views on these topics. And we at OIC look forward to what the future has in store for this really exciting company. No problem. And uh, thanks for having us today. And especially thanks for all the support that you've given us over the years. Thanks.